What a privilege it is for us to gather like this. Let's open our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. We will read one verse, and the topic is loving Jesus more. Last Sunday, if you were here or if you were able to uh, watch the video on YouTube, we studied about loving His appearing, loving His appearing. Uh, so today, we'll talk about loving the one who will appear, amen? Amen. Jesus, the one who is really appearing, the one who is coming back. Verse 22, let me read from different versions for our uh, understanding. Paul said, If anyone does not love the Lord, let him be under a divine curse. Come, O Lord. Let him be under divine curse. Come, O Lord. Other version says, If anyone does not love the Lord, let him be condemned. May our Lord come. Here's another one version. If anyone does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be accursed. O Lord, come. Three important big words there. Number one, Those who do not love the Lord. Love is mentioned there. Uh, And then another word is accursed or cursed. In the King James, it's anathema. And then the phrase, come Lord, is the Aramaic word maranatha. So in the King James, if anyone does not love the Lord, let him be anathema maranatha. That's the whole line. So, notice the first letter of that verse. It begins with the word if. If anyone. If anyone. He was writing to to the church in Corinth. It is a conditional word. It gives the condition. If anyone does not love the Lord, let him be divinely cursed or cursed by God. Something like that. Anathema. Maranatha. Uh, the Lord is coming. So, in line with our topic about preparing uh, last final check, final check for the coming of Jesus, we will talk about loving Jesus. And not only loving Jesus, period. We'll, we'll talk about loving Jesus more. Because if I ask you, do you love Jesus? You say, what kind of question is that? Of course I love Jesus. Other people would say, I cannot love Jesus more. I want to love him less so I can have less uh, accountability, less uh, sukna in the conscience. But in connection with the second coming of Jesus, the return of Jesus, the appearing of Jesus, loving Jesus is very, very important. In a verse, this verse is very it sounds very hostile or harsh. Did you notice that statement? Very harsh. Very stern. It gives a severe warning. Very severe warning. Apparently, some members, some Christians in Corinth do not love the Lord. Some of them do not love the Lord. In fact, this is the church in the Bible, Paul wrote, that there's so many divisions, so many uh, items to be disciplined. Uh, they, they fight against each other. And then uh, I want you to turn your Bibles quickly in 1 Corinthians 12, chapter 12, same book. Chapter 12, verse 3, Paul mentioned the word anathema in this way. Okay? The word anathema. He said, Therefore I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. The word there is anathema. 
So there are people before chapter 16 that Paul mentioned that these people are uh, supposed to be under the power of the Holy Spirit. They were cursing Jesus. Jesus be cursed. The word is anathema. Jesus be anathema. And then uh, Paul said, uh, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that glorifies Jesus. That is why Paul said, nobody can say Jesus be anathema under the power of the Holy Spirit. They are false. That is a false spirit. It cannot be. You know the word anathema is one of the three levels of discipline in the ordinary Hebrew synagogue. In the synagogue, members of the synagogue are counted, they are accountable for their behavior. And if anyone uh, should be corrected, should be disciplined, if there is a discipline necessary, level one means that that person will be uh, prevented from coming to the service in the synagogue, cannot attend for 30 days. The expectation is in 30 days, he will repent of his sins and change. If there is no repentance and there is no change, then level two. Level two is uh, as long as maybe for a whole year, but he will be warned regularly. He cannot attend the church or synagogue, but he will be warned that uh, there are plenty of consequences if you will not repent. If you will not repent, many things will adversely take place in your life. That's the second level. The third level of discipline is anathema. Anathema, let, let me read to you the, the document. Anathema is when the man could never be reconciled to the synagogue and was no longer accounted as a Jew at all. In other words, he's considered outsider. He's not anymore reconciliable. Hindi na siya mapabalik. And that is the, the use of that word anathema. So that word means God's curse be on him. Is that not harsh and severe? I want to be blessed. I don't want to be cursed. Hello? Right? But it says, if anyone do not love the Lord, let him be divinely cursed. Very harsh. And then Maranatha. Maranatha means, come Lord Jesus. Oh Lord, come. It is a usual uh, what's word greeting to remind them of someone who is coming. If they meet each other and they will greet and say Maranatha, that means we have hope because the Lord is coming. If you have problem and we will say Maranatha, that means there is a coming solution for all of us and that is the Lord who is coming. So let's learn that word Maranatha. Tell your neighbor Maranatha. Amen. That means the Lord is coming. Praise God. This morning I remembered uh, someone uh, telling the background of the, the song Joy to the World. How many of you can memorize the song, Christmas song, Joy to the World? It has been told that that song was not intended as Christmas song. It was intended as Christmas song. Uh, it was intended as a song about the time when Jesus comes back. Look at the wordings of this song. Joy to the world, the Lord is come, let earth receive her king. The first time he came at Christmas, he was not a king. Although he is recognized to be the future king in line of David, but he came as a little boy born in a manger. Very poor, family of Joseph and Mary. He was not crowned as a king politically, but there is coming in the future when he comes back, hallelujah, joy to the world because the king is here. The wording says, the Savior reigns. When did Jesus reign during the time when he was here? He was no he, a political king. He was not. He did not reign. He reigned over the devil, but he did not reign as a political king. Part of the song also says, He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of His righteousness. So that's about the second coming of Jesus. So this Christmas, when they, you hear the, word, the song, Joy to the World, remember 
that that is a second coming song. Amen? Amen. So, uh, that's additional uh, enjoyment for all of you. I'm just saying that this is very important uh, subject in, in these last days. I believe loving Jesus and loving Jesus more is the security and the safety of every Christian. If you are a born-again Christian and you have grown to love Jesus more and more, there is no decrease of your affection and your intimacy with Jesus. You loved Him even more. You always fall in love with Jesus again and again. And you are growing in your love for Jesus because it can be measured. How many of you know that love for Jesus can be measured? I cannot see your heart so that I cannot, I cannot see if, if that heart is, is beating for Jesus. Okay? But it, it can be proven if a person is in love with Jesus because of the word of Jesus. Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my words. You will obey my commands. As a pastor, that is one of the way I know that a person, person, a Christian person is in love with Jesus because he joyfully, obediently follow Jesus, obeys the word of Jesus. Amen? He continues to obey the word of Jesus. No complaining. Even if it's difficult, he learns what Jesus said and then obey what Jesus said. Praise God. He is growing in loving Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? You know what Jesus said? If you do these things to the list of my brothers, you, will, you are doing it to me. You can show your love for Jesus and it can be measured. If, for example, there's a poor person and he's hungry, Jesus said, if you feed him, you are doing that to me. If you give water to the thirsty, to the least of my brethren, you are doing that to me. If you are helping clothe the naked, you are doing that to me. I am the ultimate beneficiary of your service and of your love. Hallelujah. The love for Jesus can be measured. Love for the world can be measured. Amen? If I see Christians loving the system of the world, tied to the world, the philosophy of the world, the entertainment of the world, the, the sports of the world, he is so tied to those things instead of growing and being tied to the Lord. You, you can see that his love for Jesus is waning. It is decreasing. Husband and wife, you would know if your spouse is increasing in love with you. Or, uh, ay, sa una, na may isang honeymoon time. Very sweet. Subong ang sweet, sour na. Right? You, you can know. And that is why loving Jesus is a sure topic because it is in the form of stern warning. The, 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 the warning is very clear. It is in connection with the coming of the Lord. Maranatha. Hallelujah. So, let's learn, first of all, the blessings of loving Jesus or loving God. There is great promises in the Bible for those who love God. For those who love God. I only will give you about two or three verses, okay? I have plenty. It is written in the scripture, a person who loves God will receive this, will be blessed with this, all right? Let's read first the blessings that, prom that was promised to those who love God while we are here on earth. You remember last March, we talked about Psalms 91. Please say Amen. I announce ko liwat nga kung nabudlayan ka maginhawa kwa alang ninyo ipabos lang diyang ninyo nga nga mask you are allowed to breathe it is necessary for your health okay Psalms 91 let's read beginning verse 14 because 
He loves me, says the Lord. I will rescue him. I will protect him. For he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be in him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. What is the condition? Because he loves me. Because you love the Lord on earth. What are your blessings? You have his protection. You have his forgiveness. You have his productivity. You have his peace. You have his power. You have plenty of blessings while on earth. Silinganin ni Paul, Romans 8.28, sino na sa inyo nakamemorize na? That is one of the favorite verses of the Christians. For we know, it says, that all, that, that all things work together for good to them. Come on. Who love God? If you love God, nothing is accidental in your life. Because it will be woven, it will be made by God to bless you. It will be for good. God will do you good. Along with all the things that are happening in your life. We know. It's not guessing. We know. And this will happen to those who love God and who are called according to His purpose. So that's why on earth we need to increase in our love for God because that is the source of our blessing. Amen? Let's go to the next uh, verse. In glory. What's the blessing for those who love God after you leave earth? 1 Corinthians 2, 9. But just as it is written, things that no eye has seen or ear heard or mind imagined are the things God has prepared for those who love Him. Notice that? People who love the Lord will receive inconceivable things. Inconceivable because no eye, human eye, has seen these gifts that God is preparing for you. No human ear has heard the story or the description of the things that God has prepared for you. No mind, no human mind, no human philosopher, no Santa Claus has ever imagined the good things that God has prepared for you in glory. You know the word surprise? God loves surprise. And those who love the Lord, God has prepared something that human mind cannot, has not conceived. No, I have, there is no proof that it is here on earth. It is out of this world. It is surprise for you. God is prepared in glory. Do not ever limit what God will give you. Do not limit what is coming to you when life is over. Do not limit. It, our mind cannot conceive it. Our ears have not heard it. Our eyes have not seen it of the things that God has prepared for you in glory. You know, Paul has an experience of going to the third heaven. And he was shown many, many mysterious things. He was not allowed to speak. So it's not here in his letters. He was prevented by God. God said, okay, you have seen these things, but don't report it on earth. And he was given a thorn in the flesh so that he will not be prideful and start talking about what he saw in, in heaven. It is still a kept, well-kept secret, praise God. But the condition is, Loving the Lord. To love the Lord. That is the condition. Hallelujah. Amen. Unbelievers do not love the Lord. They don't care if they love the Lord or not. Many right now in the world because of, of secularism, ideas na wala Diyos, di nato kinanglan Diyos, tarangan tani, we don't need the help of God, we don't, entertain God. There is no God in the universe. We just, you know, exist here. We live and then we die. So, not, nothing. 
They don't care about loving the Lord. But for Christians, all of you who are here, you will be measured regularly about your love for the Lord. Let me give you two important examples. Book of Revelations, chapter 2, church in Ephesus. Jesus said to this church, people of Ephesus, Christians, I know your deeds, I know your labor, I know your endurance, those, those are okay, but I have something against you, the Lord said. You have lost your first love. What a sad, what a tragic statement to hear from Jesus. You have lost your first love. You will know later on that our love, our first love for Jesus must be defended and must be protected, that it should not be lost. Amen? Another example, Revelations chapter 3, Laodicean church. The Laodicean church was rebuked by Jesus. Jesus said, you are not hot, you are not cold. Nami tani kung hot ka o kung cold ka, paslan ka gid. Kung hot, nami sa kape, di ba? Kung cold, halo-halo, praise God. Pero sila ni Jesus, but you are lukewarm. That's the temperature of their heart for God. You are lukewarm. Therefore, I will vomit you with my own, from my own mouth. I, I, I will vomit you. And then, verse 20 of chapter 3, Revelations. You see Jesus outside. Outside the church. Knocking at the door. He is saying, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and will sup with me, supper with me. And... You know, be reconciled. Is it possible that at the start you love Jesus? At the end you are lukewarm to the point where Jesus is pushed outside. He's not anymore inside. He is outside, but he's still giving second chance. Knocking at the door. Hallelujah. And saying, if you hear my voice and just open the door, I will come in. Palakpakan natin natin, Lord. So now you, you see the value of loving the Lord. The value of loving the Lord, especially in these end times. So the question is, how do we maintain our love for the Lord? Anyone who does not love the Lord, if anyone do not love the Lord, let him be divinely cursed. Anathema. Let him be anathema. And then, Maranatha, the Lord is coming. So loving the Lord is very important from start to finish of our Christian life. Okay, number one. How do we uh, maintain, how do we prepare our life to love the Lord? Number one, we must grow our love for the Lord. We must grow our love for the Lord. There is such thing as first love. Amen? There is such thing as first love. But we must grow, we must cultivate that love for the Lord. Um, 1 Peter 1, verse 8 to 9. It says, Though you have not seen Him, you love Him. Is that true? Even though you have not seen Jesus, Peter was speaking to the converts he had in his time. You have not seen him, but you love him. Though you do not see him, you believe in him. There are two words, love him and believe in him. And rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. Obtaining the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. How many of you started with Jesus by faith? You trusted Jesus, right? It is true that if you started in your Christian life believing in Jesus, you are also starting also loving Jesus. Because the more you believe in Jesus, the more you fall in love with Jesus. 
the more you know about Jesus and then trust Jesus, the more you grow in loving Jesus. A baby. How many of you have observed babies? When they are born, born, members of your family, they are so self-centered. And yet the parent continue to love this baby, right? Hindi katulog, ginapapulaw sila, kahigko sang lampin. Sang una, pang laba kami sang lampin, kaya wala pa diaper. Nga, throw away nga diaper. <laughs> And then all kinds of things you need to do to take care of this baby until the baby begins to grow, becomes aware that you are the parent you notice the baby can recognize you and begins to trust you. Kilala niya ang imo voice. Other nga voice ang iba, nadlok siya, pero si imo niya, nami kalma siya. Amen? Until such time, he started to talk. And when he begins to talk and say to you, Mommy, I love you. How would you feel? That baby has no automatic love for his parents. But he is growing, becoming aware who you are, knowing your care, your kindness, knowing your voice, knowing your rule in life, knowing your value, and what a joy it is when the baby begins to say, I love you. Dala namo ng apo namon dire, si Jed, kay si Tila, kay may mga, may mga, may mga emergency man kami sa, dito sa, sa Iruilo, sa parent nga ginakilala ni, ni my bell. So we have to take care of the two. Dala sila dire. Abi naman, mabisyo ang gamay si baby, baby Ben. Kay daw three, three going to four years old pa lang siya. So, natatap, napakaon, tanan na lang. Ano, tanan ko sa uli eh. Permission ka palapit kay Sister Sinayda na kinupo. Sa uli, hindi na tinawag niya na si Sister Sinayda, hindi na nalulamay ang panawag niya, Mama. <laughs> Ma, si, Sister Sinayda, hindi ka sa primero, hindi ka na ako siya, Mama ka na. <laughs> they recognize kindness. They recognize love. And they reciprocate. They love you back. That is the reason why the first step we must do is from now on, we make a decision. I don't want to remain baby in my love for Jesus. I want to grow in my love for Jesus. Amen. I want to be mature in my love for Jesus. Silingni Peter, yes, you started with a relationship where you do not see him. He is invisible. But you can still love him. Hallelujah. You can still believe in Him. And then you grow by, by faith. And then there is an outcome of that faith. Salvation of your soul. As you grow in faith, I challenge you to grow in loving the Lord. Amen. Tingala ko subong kadamo sa mga Christians, gina-challenge ko sila. Do you still believe in Jesus? Yeah, I still believe in Jesus. But believing, mind you, is different from loving Hello? Believing is different from loving. Ah, do you still trust Jesus? I trust Jesus. But do you follow Jesus? <laughs> not anymore. They are not anymore following Jesus. Jesus is just a, uh, for emergency use. Nangkahi mo ugto ka na lang. Dira mo na lang magamit si Jesus. That is not love. You know, sugot ka muna mga misis nga ang love ni, ni Mr. Mo kung gabi lang. Or for emergency lang, hospital siya. Sugot ka mo mga mister nga love ni misis nyo. Inang dulon ka lang, dulan ka lang sa noodles. Hmm? Sige, kada. Sugot ka mo sila. Ginakilala ka man Japan nga husband pero hindi ka na ya, wala na ya ang love affair. The honey is out of the moon. Kani wala na sang honeymoon. Kita, ang ato relasyon sa Lord, 
dapat patubuon ta ni. Hindi lang kay maayo kita kung yang pa siling sang pag-asawahay bala. Pero hasta sa pagputi na sang buhok mo. From first to last. Palakpakan natin ang atong Lord. Amen. Of course, kung young Christian ka, gag-grow ka, madali mag-grow. Ang laigay sa imo kung baguhanon ka, learn many things about new Christianity, new Christians, you are a new convert, read His Word, learn what is the teaching of the Lord because He is your Lord. Read the Bible, read it like a love letter. Read it like a diary of the Lord about you and about His love for you. Spend time with the Lord. Hallelujah. Keep thinking about the Lord. Uh, talk to Him. Talk about Him to other people. Recognize His voice like a sheep. You know, Jesus said, My sheep know my voice. Recognize the voice of the Lord. Sing to Him. Amen. Sing to Him. And when it is proper, defend Him. People talk against Him. You, you stand up. Make a stand. Hallelujah. Obey Him. Those are proper things for you to grow your love for the Lord. You grow it by faith. You grow it by obedience. You grow it by growing intimacy with Him. Amen. Slowly nag-aalagad ka. Hallelujah. Let's go to number two. Number two, para mag-in love kita kay Lord, number two, we must focus on His love for us. We must focus on His love for us. Hindi po silingon that there is problem about God loving us. It has never been a problem. There is no issue. It has never been a problem about God loving us. Let me tell you why. Because God is love. His nature is love. He cannot go against His nature. He is love. He will always be doing loving things. Kindness, forgiveness, gospel of grace, hallelujah, mercy. He cannot go against His nature. He cannot go against His nature. So, God's love for us is not a problem. The problem is our awareness of His love. We don't know how much He loves us. Kung kay isang loves ang Lord, ginatakos natin sa aton experiences. May sakit ako, wala ko nag-ayo. Astaga mo na lang ni ako. Ganyan siguro, hindi ko yung palangga ni Lord. We base our understanding of God's love to your experience, but God's love can never be defined by your experience. You know, ang sa Malakay, the, the book of Malakay, ang problem sa ito sa mga, mga uh, hudiyo sa, sa Lord Munin, wala nila na-appreciate. They did not appreciate God's preferential love for them. I-explain ko sa inyo kung ano ng preferential love. Malachi chapter 1, verse 2. I have loved you, says the Lord. But you ask, how have you loved us? Paano mo kami ginplangga? Sinis ng Lord, I love you. Paano? Then, next line. Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Declares the Lord. Yet, I have loved Jacob. I have loved Jacob, God said. I hated Esau. Yes, you, you sons of Jacob. You Israelite. I preferred you. Your, your Jacob. Your, your grandfather. I preferred Jacob. I love Jacob more than Esau. Preferential love. He loved Jacob more than Esau. And yet, ano ginabalos sa mga anak ni Jacob? They have shown uh, spitefully. They have shown uh, unkindness to God. Hamak mo na nga maghalad sila sa Lord. Ang ginahalad nila, mga masakiton ng mga sapat. Sila so, Lord, is that how you love me? If I am a father, where is my fear? If I am a father, where is your reverence for me? Dalabala ng nalad ninyo sa gobernador kung ma-please malipay ang gobernador ninyo. 
You understand what I'm saying? They treated the Lord as if He is nothing. They, they are giving Him very, very low worth of love and worth of worship. Very, very low. Dasan nga pos nga sila sa isang Lord, nga pos nga pa kamo sa kung magpanimbahon kamo, nga padag-padag ang inyo nga mga tiil, ga, ga, ano ko nun, nagasimangot, bala nagasimangot, basahan niyo sa Malakay. Ang manang complain sa Lord. Siya na ano, ginahibo-hibo sa Lord sa ato, natakaan sila. So, they have not grown loving God. They did not pay their tithes. They did not love the family that God has given them. They do not honor God. The whole book of Malachi is telling us about that. Amuna sila isang Lord nga, don't you know that the name of the Lord will be considered honored and great all over the world from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The Lord's name will be worthy of praise. Wala sila nag-focus sang love, sang Lord sa ila. Na kung ang focus nyo, Paano ako mag-grow sang love ko kay Lord man? Ma-frustrated ka lang. Isi pa bala ninyo nagligad nga mga inadlaw, binulan. Uh, ikaw ikag taksa ninyo ang inyo love sa Lord ba? Ma-disappointed ka siguro. Siguro ma ma shame ka. You you will feel feel ashamed. So don't focus on your love for God. Siling sang Bible. Let let me encourage you with this. Siling sang Bible, uh, 1 John chapter 4. Verse 10, This is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as atoning sacrifice for our sins. Verse 19, We love because He first loved us. Sila yung nidyan, kung parte sa gugmang paghahambalan, hindi ta pag-umpisahan sa palangga ta ang Diyos, kundi umpisahan ta, nga ang Diyos nagpalangga sa aton. You understand what I'm saying? Kadamo sa mga Christians, wala sila nag-grow sa pag-inlove kay Lord, tungod wala ginag-apresyar ang pagpalangga ni Lord sa ila. Now, sa hindi madugay, we will have our communion. Right? What do you think? nga ginbutang na ni Jesus nga regular practice sang worship sang church ang communion why do you think nga siling niya kada magtipon ka mo sa sila nga pagtipon ninyo you take the bread after giving thanks you break it and you distribute it to everyone and then you will do it in remembrance of me now let me ask you why do you think Ginambal na ni Jesus nga in remembrance of me. Nga si Jesus insecure? Nga ba si malipatan nyo? Bala ni Jesus. The Lord knows the triviality of our mind. We normally forget what Christ has done for us. But when we hold the bread in remembrance of the Lord, we are saying, Lord, I remember the price you paid for my salvation. I remember the torture. I remember you hanging on the cross between heaven and earth. I remember the blood you shed. I remember the insults, the condemnation of people you tried to help. And how you voluntarily gave yourself like a lamb led to the slaughter. And you hanged on the cross for me. I remember you were broken for me. That is the kind of remembrance that Jesus meant. It was not because he might, he might be forgotten. No, it is for us because the more we remember and we value the sufferings, the torture that he underwent, Hallelujah! The more we will fall in love with Jesus. Everything He has done for us. Hallelujah! We remember Him. We take hold of the cup in remembrance of Him. Paano ka na-save? You see, pa ni Peter, you were not saved by, by paying with money. No, it was that gold or silver that was paid. It was by the precious blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God, that was, that was paid. 
Your salvation is priceless. Your salvation is costly. Hallelujah! You remember that because you are special to Him. Palakpakan natin natin, Lord. We must focus on His love for us. You remember the time nga may babae dito nga bantog nga sinful woman who just barged in and came into the banquet that Jesus was uh, attending. They were eating in the house of Simon the Pharisee. And this woman came into the house crawling at the feet of Jesus and started to cry. And he washed the feet of Jesus with her tears. And then, then wipe it with her hair. And then he put anointing, the, the perfume. He put perfume on the feet of Jesus. And she started to kiss the feet of Jesus. And Simon criticized the woman in his mind. Jesus knew about it. And so Jesus told the story. Here's the story. There's a rich man and two borrowers of money. He was a lender. There are borrowers. So one borrowed only a small amount of money. And then the other ones borrowed a big amount of money. All right? At the time, Sang Pairanay, both of them cannot pay. So they asked the lender to forgive them of their debt. And the, the story of Jesus said, and the, the lender forgave both of them. The one with gamay lang ang utang, the one with big utang, they were all forgiven. And then here's the question. Who of these two would love him most? Simon had a wise answer. Of course, the one who has big utang and was forgiven, he would love most. The sinning died in Jesus. Look at this woman. He is a great sinner. You said in your mind, he is a, she is a great sinner. And look, ikaw iya, pag abot ko diri, you did not even give me a, you know, Jewish kiss. Wala. You did not even give me water to wash my feet. You did not even give me an ordinary cooking oil to anoint my head. You are a poor host. You are not hospitable. But this woman, she started coming in. She did this all for me. Therefore, here's the conclusion. He loves much because he was forgiven much. Do you want to grow in your love for Jesus? Focus on his love for you. How much did he forgive you? How much did he suffer for you? How much did he offer for you? So that you will go to heaven. Amen? The more we sing about how Jesus died on the cross, the more we appreciate him. And I say, Muya Lord, I, I don't deserve anything. I don't deserve anything. What did I do? Sa isang Bible, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Well, we cannot help ourselves. We will help less. He died for us. While we were still enemies, He died for us. Everything is pabor. Everything is kindness. Everything is grace. Everything is mercy. Everything is good. Amen. Focus on His love for you. The more you understand, Lord, how, how much you love how much you love me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Amen? Now, so that's number two. Let's go to number three. Number three, we must weigh his worth more. We must timbang, timbangunta. We must measure the worth of Jesus more. See, if he is not worthy, he is not really valuable, why will you give time and why will you give love to him if he is not valuable? Here's the challenge of Jesus. Write these verses down if you want, but this is number three. Matthew 10, 37 to 38. Jesus is teaching in Matthew 10. Siling niya, if 
you love your father and mother more than you love me, you are not worthy of being mine. You are not worthy of me. How many of you here love your mother or father? Come on, raise your hands. If your love for your mother and father is greater than your love for me, you are not worthy of me. Amo nang ginambal ko nga way he's worth more. He is more than our parents. Our parents are okay. Our parents are good. But they are not perfect. They cannot erase our sin. They cannot bring us to heaven. Jesus is worth more. Here's another line. If you love your son or daughter, kaina, kabataan to, iniya parents, if you love your son or daughter more than me, you are not worthy of being me. So parents and children, if you love those intimate relationships you have more than your love for Jesus, you are not worthy of Jesus. Here's the next line. If you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of being mine. That means you, you consider your life better and more valuable than, the, than, than Jesus. That means Jesus said, you are not worthy of me. If you are not willing to suffer for me, you are not worthy of me. Hey, do you understand this teaching? Only Christianity has this teaching. We are lifting Jesus. He is worthy. More than parents, more than brothers and sisters, more than our own life. We must weigh His worth more than our life. Next. Silingya, if you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give it up for me, you will save it. Amen? Amen? Peter, after the resurrection, he remembered, he... he uh, betrayed Jesus or he denied Jesus three times. And when he heard that Jesus is risen from the dead, I think one of the things that Peter uh, understand is, how can I follow on and follow up with Jesus? He was so guilty. So, silisang John chapter 21, nagkwa si Peter sang iya mga galamiton pangisda. Actually, I'm going back to fishing. Who will go with me? dala niya mga disciples yung iba na nangisda sila. Whole night, nangisda sila. They caught nothing. In the morning, ah, pamanag-banag na, Jesus was seen to be on the shore. At ito si Jesus. Panawag si Jesus, Hey, brothers, may isda ka mo? Na natunugan dahil ni John, ng John na the disciple. Sige, it's the Lord. Pag siling ni John nga, it's the Lord. Si Peter, yeah, Nag-ubas ang iyang uh, panapton. Uh, handa na sa maglangoy. Bayaan niya ang baruto. Bayaan, bayaan niya ang lambat. He swam towards the shore and nag-join siya dito kay Jesus. Dito, samtang nagaluto-luto sila dito. Sang, gusto niya ma-reconcile sa kay Jesus. Are you following this? So dito, samtang kapamahaw sila sa isang Bible, John chapter 21. Sila ni Jesus, Simon, Simon, do you love me more than this? See, the word more than this was added to the question, do you love me? The question, do you love me, should have been, okay. <laughs> Sino sa inyo, nami, mag, nami sabton inang question, do you love me? Hapo sabton, pero kung may sugpon, budlay sabton. Do you love me more than this? More than these earthly things? More than your profession? Do you love me more than these other disciples? Do you love me more than your boat? Do you love me more than the things you are aiming to achieve in your own life? Do you love me more than this? Abtik man si Simon magsiling, Yes, Lord, I love you. That's what siling ni Jesus. Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Three times. Gin pamangkot siya ni Jesus. Kay si Peter must know that loving Jesus must be more uh, valuable. There must be more weight 
in loving Jesus than anything else in the world. Nga, madamo nga Christians nga, sa una gayapaya pa sila sa pag-serve sa Lord, so nagadigamay, nagagamay ila pag-serve sa Lord. That means nga nang nagdigtahaw ang ilang nga intention mag-serve sa Lord. Kada hambal mo sa kay Lord nga, yes Lord, I love you. Sila hindi Lord, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. Do something. Ano gani sugo sa Bible? I discovered this. Sa Old Testament, kadamo sang ginahambal dra kag sugo sang Lord in form of of command. Love the Lord your God. Remember the Lord your God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Gin repeat ina sa New Testament kay namang kot sila. Jesus, what is the greatest command? Sila ni Jesus. You know the greatest command? Hero Israel. Okay? The Lord your God is one. Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. You know, these are the, the four areas of your personality and life. Sa so, diin gina, gina tigana mo, gina partida mo sa mga valuable things sa inyong mga life. Anong worth, worthy things sa life mo? With all your heart. Okay? Kung damuda mo ang uh, valuable sa heart mo, gina partida mo na, may room kagid. Pero pag siling ni Lord nga with all your heart, Ano na lang nabilin para sa iba mga bagay kung ang, ang heart mo na-reserve 100% kay Lord? Kaya mo ng mind, ang command. With all your heart. With all your soul. Ang soul mo, ara dira ang imong uh, reasoning, memory, ara dira imong logic, ara dira emotion mo. With all your soul. With all your, ano pa get? Mind. Mind. What comes into your mind? With all your mind, you have been thinking about many things, but now you can love the Lord with all your mind. Use your mind to love the Lord. Use your soul to love the Lord. Use your heart to love the Lord. Strength. How do you use your strength to love the Lord? We must weigh His worth more. Grabe ang mga evidences sa mga uh, born again Christians in history and in the New Testament. So history, they offer their life 100% kay Lord. Because the Lord is important. More important than business. More important than money. More important than anything else. Siling ni Jesus, you cannot serve both God and money. If you love one, you will despise the other. So mo ina nga, Kung kaysa, laban na na nga ito nga gugma sa kwarta, kag pinangita sa kwarta, sa sa kay Lord. Nga ang nagatag sa kwarta si Lord. Mano ba lang, panong dumabala ninyo na? And so beginning today, takson nyo ang inyong, uh, sa heart ninyo, ang weight ni Lord. Matimbang si Lord dapat. May measure kagaya sa heart ni mo, Lord. Lord, you are more valuable to me than anything else. Kwa ang tanan sa akon, hindi lang ikaw yung madula sa akon. That should be the expression of the Christians. Let's go to number four, then we'll prepare for communion. Number four, we must shield it, our love for the Lord. We must shield our love for the Lord from the world. We must shield, defend. Selene Jesus, Matthew 24. In the last days, the love of many will wax cold. Amo na nga ginambal ni Paul nga, if anyone do not love the Lord, let him be condemned. Maranatha. In the last days, before Jesus comes, the love of people will grow cold. The robotic niya ang feeling, ang emotion sa mga tao ya. Yung ina-edukar kita nga daw mga grubotik na lang balaya. Wala na siyang sentimentality. Nami yung mga Christian, sentimental kita, emotional kita. We cry. We weep. We feel the pain. We sympathize. We empathize. We feel care. 
Grabe yan, matouch ki Jay ang Christian. Siya yan, tungod sa aton nga, uh, kinaugali bilang Christian. Pero, mga inigugma, magsulod na gani, bala ang filosofiya sa world sa aton. Last of the flesh. Last of the eyes. Pride of life. Magsulod na na sa aton, kagya, e, e pleasure kita sa world. The world will offer us pleasure. Hindi naman nami ang ginapaabot ang pleasure sa heaven niya. Yeah? Ato ah, na lang yung pagsamantalahan ang tanyag ni Satanas niya. Yeah? And that is the reason why you have to shield your love for Jesus. May mga pwersa sa bilog na kalibutan that they are trying to get the attention, your attention from Jesus at iatag mo na lang sa ilay ang attention mo niya. Yeah? ang time nga inugatag mo kay Jesus, ginakuha nila. Are you wondering why you don't love Jesus like you used to? Isa ka question ini. Ang sabat, because the world has got your heart. Your love for the Lord died, so is your love for the lost. Died also. So, you lost your fight. Sometimes, It's, it's the care of this life, care for your job, care for your family, hobby, about sports, television, Facebook, internet, that blocks our love for the Lord. Siling pa sa Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, get away, throw away the weights ng mga gapabugat sa aton, and sin that easily entangles and run this race. May nagapahinay sa aton, gabalabag sa aton niya, ihaboy ito ni, sin, and all the other cares of this world. And let's focus our attention in the love for the Lord. Let's protect our love for God. Kung may magapauntat sa imo, magapaluya sa imo, magaslow down sa imo, sa imong paglove sa Lord, dapat Tatarun mo na, tatarun mo na ang attack ni Satanas. The world is competing for the love and attention that you can give to God, that belongs to the Lord. We, di, we are distracted by the world. Siling ni Paul kay Timothy. Timothy, bisitahi ko, Dre, kay ang migo mo di nga si Dimas, nagbiya na sa akin, nag-upod uh, na sa world. Siling niya, Dimas has fallen in love with the world. He's not anymore here side by side fighting with me and ministering with me. He fall away because of his great love for the world. The world is competing in our hearts for the love that we need to give to God. So shield your love for the Lord, especially in these last days. Amen? Okay. Take your communion cup and your bread. Let us all stand as we prepare for communion. Agdawan ko di ato niya mga musicians to prepare also. Do you love the Lord more than this? I, let me read some of the verses I want uh, you to know as we prepare for communion. For you to know what God wants. Siling sang Proverbs 23:26. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. That is what God wants. My son, my daughter, give me your heart. In Jeremiah chapter 2, 31 to 32, Humble the Lord, Oh, my people, listen to the words of God. Have I been unjust to Israel? Have I been to them a land of darkness and of evil? Why then do my people say, At last we are free from God. We won't have anything to do with Him again. How can you disown your God? Like that, 
Can a girl forget her jewels? What bride will seek to hide her wedding dress? Yet, for years on end, my people have forgotten me, the most precious of their treasures. That's very important. Have I been bad to them? Have I been unkind to them? Yet, my people have forgotten me. Years with no end. Can a bride forget, forget you know, his, his wedding garment? Siling diri sang Lord. My people have forgotten me. The most precious treasure. Is the Lord the most precious treasure? Is He the, the most precious treasure in your life? Let's prepare for this. Take bread. Because I have received it from the Lord, therefore I passed it on to you that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, He took bread and after giving thanks, He broke it. Gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Therefore, as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you are proclaiming the Lord's death until He comes. So, Lord, by this bread and by this cup, we remember the price you paid. We remember your suffering. It was not because of any crime you did. It was not because of your sin. But it, is, it was because of our sins. You offered your life for us. We are saved. So bless everyone in remembering you so that we will grow loving you. Bless this bread, everyone who will partake of this bread. And bless this cup and everyone who will partake of this cup. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's partake of the bread and then of the cup. Thank you, Jesus.
We have decided, Lord, to grow in love for you. To keep falling in love with you. We have decided, oh Lord, to focus in how much you love us. In this way, we can reciprocate and say we love you because you first loved us. We have decided, dear Lord, to allow your Holy Spirit to lead us always in loving you and knowing that you are worth more than life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping us to guard our love for Jesus. We will never decrease our love for God and for Jesus. Hallelujah. Help us to make our love for Him intense, intimate, and eternal. Hallelujah. Bless everyone, dear Lord. Bless the family represented here tonight. We pray for our brothers who were not able to attend, oh Lord, this communion service and to listen to this message, Lord. But let, let your spirit, Lord, touch them as well in the name of Jesus. Raise your hands to God. Let me bless you. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord make His face, turn His face towards you and give you peace. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said Amen.